Hi, today I'm going to show you a super simple way to make dramatic black and white photos from almost any otherwise ordinary image. Bring a touch of drama to your portfolio. So let's get started. First, locate a nice colour portrait of a person in the stock studio, for example. We're going to turn this photo into a dramatic black and white. But first, we need to turn it into a regular black and white. That is, your normal black and white as though the original were taken that way. Now that we have our nice photo located, let's set the HSL adjustment and bring the saturation down to 0%. So we go down here and you'll see adjustments. Now we need HSL, which is there. Click on that and we need to bring the saturation down to 0%. There's the saturation there. You've got hue, saturation and luminosity. We just need to grab that one there and turn it right down to the left so there's absolutely no colour saturation. There's our black and white image. 0%. Next, we'll begin to add some dramatic flair to the photo by applying a curves adjustment. Using this adjustment, and we'll find it there, adjustments again. Now let's scroll down that list, and somewhere there is curves. There's the curves adjustment, and we'll apply, apply an S curve to the shadows. Now that means we bring the shadows down and the highlights up. So let's curve that up there a little bit. You can see the highlights are coming up. And there's the shadows going down a bit. Now that's way too dramatic. Don't make it too extreme. So let's tone down the S-curve. We'll bring that up a little bit. And bring that one down a little bit. That's got the hair quite a lot darker in the background. And... There we go there. Now that we have the curves adjustment in place, we can do a before and after. Simply go up to the curves adjustment layer and turn it off. Turn it back on and there you can see the highlights and it's been darkened down a bit. Maybe I can drop that down a little bit more. Let's get rid of the curves adjustment. There we are. Off, on. That's not too bad. That's quite dramatic. Don't make it too extreme. And if it is, just tone it down a little bit. Now that's our before and after. So next we're going to add a black border to the whole image. And to do this, we first need to expand our document. Now, how can you put a black border around that? And we do that by cropping outwards. So press C for the crop tool. That doesn't work on here. So my keyboard must need a little bit of setting. Where's our crop tool over the left hand side? There it is there. There's our crop tool. Now we just need to crop outwards. Crop outwards. Now, that's fairly even all around, isn't it? And it's a nice, not too dramatic border. Press Enter to confirm the crop. And there you go. It's expanded it, right, expanded the border, the document actually, to a much larger size. Now that's what we want. So now we're ready to make our black border, which will blend into the rest of the photo. To do this, first make a new pixel layer. There we go over there. Just right click on that. New pixel layer. There we go. You can see on the right hand side I've got it highlight. New pixel layer. First make a new pixel layer, which we've done. Then press B to get out the paintbrush.
and you can see our paintbrushes settings are up there on the top left hand side. Give your paintbrush a nice large size and 100% flow and opacity. So there's the width. Now we need it a lot bigger than that. We need, hmm, let's say 250, 100%, 100% and hardness, hmm, no. Let's set that to zero. We'll try that at zero. Okay, now I'm painting in the black border. I haven't set the brush really large on purpose because if you set a really large brush, you can actually run into quite a bit of trouble. I'll just pause this while I finish painting in that whole area. Also make sure that the paint colour is absolutely black. Now I've paused this and gone on and painted in the border so you're not sitting there watching me painting. Now we're going to paint the edges of the photo to make our black border. After the edges are black, use the left bracket key to make your brush smaller. Let's get back to our brush there. And I made the brush 400, but let's make it considerably smaller so that down here you can see just down there where it's painting. It might I might have made it too small. So let's go back up to a comfortable size, about 130. And there we go. You can see that there. There's just a little a little dot. Now that's all we want. But we want to paint that edge in so that it blends nicely. And for that we need to reduce the flow rate to 10%. As we go down up the top here. 10%. There we go. Now that's just a very light, light dark. A lighter shade of dark shall we say and you can see that that's blending in nicely there down the bottom we can go around there we can go along the edges there and there is an edge there there's not much of an edge because there is two slightly different shades of black there you could change that by using the colour picker when you set your black colour because as it turns out this image doesn't quite have an actual pitch blackness to it. Even though we set that with the HSL adjustment and we can paint that there with 10% flow. It doesn't grab it straight away but it does soften those edges a little bit. There we go. And that gives us the exact amount of paint that we want. Now that's a straight line down there and we don't want that straight line showing. So let's just paint that out slightly. So we've got the hair as though it's flowing across the black border. Have we got that okay on both sides? That's okay up there. Let's just get rid of that. 10% flow is not very much paint. Now there we've got right at the top there's a bit of a straight edge there so let's bring that around there into there. I've smoothed that over there so that black there is not quite as black as that black there. So I think the thing to do there would have been to use the colour picker to take that black to make the border with it. Now, there we go. I don't think there's any straight edges that I can see in there. And there's no straight edges down there. 
that corner is nicely rounded and I can't see any straight edges there. That allows us, that 10% allows us to precisely add the exact amount of paint that we want. For this step I like to work on a new pixel layer in case I want to remove any of the painting that I do. And you can see that effect here. If I turn that off, that's quite dramatic. There we go. Now we'll carefully paint over her neck and shoulders and blend her into the black border as well. That looks so much better. And if you ever paint too much, you can press E for the eraser tool, then erase any painting you've done. That's the beauty of working on new pixel layers because it allows us to erase the painting we've done without erasing the actual photo. So let's bring that size up a little bit, 330, because we want to paint out, bring the hardness, zero hardness, bring the flow back up. Mm. I don't want too much because it'll get too dramatic otherwise. We want her, we want to paint out um, her neck and shoulders. Neck and shoulder actually, because you can only see the one shoulder there. There we go. It does look a bit dramatic when you first do it, but you can see I've got zero hardness there. going just sort of easing around where her hair strands are down over the shoulder and we can take that shoulder right out there so as we go And there we go. That's quite dark. Actually, what I want to do is step backwards through that a little bit. So let's have a look at that. Press the erase key. bring that down there because I made that much too dark. Bring that around there. Now we'll go back to the brush key and bring that back down to 10%. with quite a large brush and you can see that now I can brush that in smooth those edges over that I created there by using the eraser tool but I've still got just enough there showing that it's there we go. Now that's looking much better. Not quite such a stark output. At this point our photo is looking really good, but I want to show you a few more tips to really polish this dramatic effect. First I want to show you my favourite trick for blending her hair with the black border. For this trick we'll make another pixel layer and then paint black across her hair. Go to there, new pixel layer, right click on that new pixel layer and there we've got another pixel layer. Next, we'll, and paint black across her hair. Okay, we've got 
a black brush. Paint black across the hair. You see I've left it at 10% flow. The opacity 100, hardness 0. We don't want any dramatic um, slabs of paint on there. It's best to just paint across her hair like this. You can see the hair is being painted out there. The highlights on her hair are disappearing and we're going to use that in a moment to bring it to bring just the highlights back Go around there. Now I could darken that a little bit more but, and make it quicker obviously but remember you're working as an art form here so speed is not essential. Take your time with these things and if you take your time with them you get them right. There we go. Now that's all on its own layer and if you're not happy with it well you just clear it off the layer. You can even completely delete the layer. Okay, now that's not too bad. That's The hair is still vaguely there, but mostly gone. And that's that layer there. Next we'll make it so that just her hair highlights are visible. To do, to do this we'll use blend ranges. Blend ranges are an advanced tool but I'll show you exactly what you need to do for this effect. So to use blend ranges, press the gear icon. So we're going to bring out the highlights and to do that we press on this gear icon. You can see the blend options little pop-up comes up and we can move that out of the way slightly and we bring this down, bring the highlights node down so that our black paint is no longer applied to the highlights in her hair. And you can see that how it's brought out the highlights in her hair. Just the highlights. We can already see her highlights now but if you want even more of a hair shine to come through you can drag this node over to the left. You can drag that left slightly and that really makes it pop. Not too much otherwise it looks a bit odd. But that bright light that's shining across her face is now reflected on her hair as well. Now I think that looks amazing. And we can get rid of that now and there it goes. Next I want to give our photo a more moody look and to do this we'll apply another curves adjustment. With this adjustment we're going to bring the shadow node up. So there's our adjustments right down the bottom there. And we need another Can I hesitate while I'm talking? Curves adjustment. There we go. With this adjustment we're going to bring the shadow node up. Okay, in this, with this adjustment we're going to bring the shadow node up. And right on the left hand side there and as we do this you can see that the photo begins to turn grey because the darkest parts of the photo are being brightened. Just got it. Oops, that's, there we go. That's a bit too much. See, you can bring that up and really overdo it. But we just wanted to bring that up a little bit. To about there I'd say. And that gives a sort of a hazy moody look around the whole image. This step is totally optional but I think adding grey gives the photo, <coughs> excuse me, gives the photo a nice sense of drama. Let's pop that out of the way.
Now for our final step, I want to show you how to re-darken any areas that have become too bright. First apply another curves adjustment. Then darken the image. There we go, another curves adjustment. There we go, darken the whole image. That's very dark. Now we'll invert this layer by pressing Command or Control I. Command I inverts it. Then with the paintbrush tool we can paint in white over the areas that we want the darkening effect applied to. There's our paintbrush and we want white. You can see that's painting it out there. Around there, paint that right out. It's far too small that brush. Let's bring it up so it's a bit bigger. There we go. So we're darkening the whole thing. You may wonder why you're doing that having just spent so much time lightening it up. But you'll see in a moment. There we go. If you look more closely, you can now see that this adjustment is being applied to the black border we made in addition to the model. It's making the black background look inconsistent since some areas are darker than others. To fix this, we'll make the curves adjustment a child layer of the original photo by dragging it down and to the right. There's our curves adjustment. Now we bring, drag that right down and move it across to the right. There we go. Now you can see the black border and the girl, just in case that has some effect, we'll reduce that because we don't want it there. Now, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? That makes it so the curves adjustment will only affect the model's photo, not the black border we created. Now that's taken care of, I'm going to do a little more painting. That looks so much better. Here's the photo that we started with. Well, let me show you that. We've got to untick that, untick that and so forth. There's the photo we started with. And there's the photo we now have. If you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my other YouTube videos. And thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Solutions tutorial.